Hello from San Antonio. This is Siren Tarot. Welcome back to another Pick a Card reading. What blessings are coming your way? Subscribers request. For this reading, I am using four different decks, a tarot deck and three different oracle decks, which I don't usually use oracle decks at this channel. But this reading is timeless. I will shuffle and pull four cards from each deck to form four different piles. All of my pick a card readings are for the general collective for entertainment purposes. If anything does resonate, that could be synchronicity. However, I do emphasize entertainment purposes. Uno, dos, tres. Cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Time does not exist, but it is now 2.02 p.m. San Antonio, Texas, August 3rd, 2020, full moon in Aquarius. Goddess Guidance. Tierra de la Santa Muerte. Goddess Guidance. Uno. Dos. Tres. Cuatro. Uno. Dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. One of the reasons why I rarely use oracle cards at this channel is because they are damn hard to shuffle. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, Cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. How does that look on camera? Looks decent. Okay. Uh, Black Moon Astrology Cards, and this is Denise Lynn's Sacred Destiny Oracle. Uno Mas.
Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, really thick cardstock. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Bueno, four gorgeous piles. This is pile one. This is pile two. This is pile three. And this is pile four. If you chose pile one, here is your reading. Fulfillment. Community. Healing chaos. New beginnings. That is gorgeous. Mercury retrograde reinvention. Ninth house, faith. I'm seeing a big change. I'm seeing transformation. I'm seeing expansion for pile one. I see you being pushed out of your comfort zone. Neptune, sacrifice. Could be that your heart chakra is opening up, which can be painful. There's an intensity of feeling here. Libra, I balance. Isis, past life. The situation involves your past life memories. Diana, focused attention. Keep your unwavering thoughts, feelings, and actions focused on your target and you will make your mark. Mary Magdalene, unconditional love. Love yourself, others, and every situation, no matter what the outward appearances may be. Kuan Yin, compassion. Release judgments about yourself and others and focus on the love and light that is within everyone. La Luna. Lots of water to this pile. Lots of feeling. Intense emotions being stirred up. Yeah, Reina de Copas, Queen of Cups. 
I said them right there, Scorpio. All this water, Pisces, Queen of Cups, Scorpio, La Templanza, Temperance. So it could be that you've been in this quiet period, this period of stasis, stagnation for quite some time. Maybe you've been just chilling in your comfort zone. I see you being pushed out of your comfort zone. And there's always some amount of pain, um, some discomfort with that when you're pushed out of your comfort zone. Um, there could be a big move involved. Um, this could be a really dramatic life change. You could be going through a divorce. Um, it could be that you're being forced into a new role like caregiver, caretaker, um, but I see a phase coming to an end here. This is a new phase. This is a new chapter in your life. This is big, very transformative. Um, I don't usually call out multiple possibilities, but this is not my comfort zone, reading oracle cards. This is definitely a, a new thing for me. Um, not my usual pick a card at all. So I'm just seeing a lot of different things here, but the focus is on being pushed out of your comfort zone, a new chapter in your life. And that could be any number of things. Um, could be you're starting a new job and you're usually pretty private, pretty quiet. I'm getting strong 12th house energy here. So you could be a 12th houser, meaning you have one or more personal planets in the 12th house, the house of Pisces. You could also be a Pisces or have a Neptune that makes a lot of aspects. You could have strong water in your chart. I feel like the emphasis here is on water. So you could have Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, and or Mercury. Um, I see you being pushed out of the 12th house into the 6th house, which the 6th house is the house of Virgo, and that's service. That can be about taking care of someone else, um, an elderly family member, someone who's disabled, someone who's close to you, although it could be a professional job as well, something in the medical industry. Um, it could be a really intense connection that is triggering you and challenging you and pushing you out of your comfort zone. That's what I keep getting for pile one is being pushed out of your comfort zone, being challenged in some way. And there is going to be some discomfort and some stress involved. Um, but if you go in deep and you do the work, you check in with your intuition, you meditate, create a sacred space for yourself, you should be able to handle these challenges. Um, with this tremendous growth, there are going to be numerous blessings. The focus in this last row is on balance. New beginnings and balance. Finding this beautiful balance between your time alone, where you have this sacred space, where you're taking care of your spiritual hygiene and relationships with other people. It could be that you've been in kind of quasi-hermit mode for quite some time. 
and I see new relationships in your life, professional relationships, um, could be a really intense romantic sexual relationship. Community, I see you being around other people and being a service. You could be doing work in your community. This could be about charity work, working for a nonprofit. And you're going to find your fulfillment in this new phase, this new chapter of your life, this new role that you're taking on. It's going to bring you tremendous peace, healing, empowerment. You could be getting crazy downloads. There's probably a lot of stuff going on in the 5D. You're probably seeing crazy synchronicities if you chose pile one. So that's what I have. If that resonates, please let me know. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications, which is gracias. And if you chose pile two, Security, that's beautiful. Purification. Opportunity. Solitude. Gemini, I think. Moon, so. Grand Cross, Provoker. So I see a Cataclyst. A cataclyst. I see a catalyst for pile two. South node, life's debts. Kali, endings and beginnings. The old must be released so that the new can enter. Bust, independent. Your independence is a foundation for your strength and success. I see a relationship in your life, an intimate relationship. It's very intense, and this is going to serve as a catalyst to put you on this new path, this path to empowerment. Frasia, bold. Unleash your adventurous side. Take risk and be daring. Similar to pile one, I see you being pushed out of your comfort zone. South node is the comfort zone, and you're being pushed toward the path that leads to your north node, self-actualization and empowerment. Yamanya, golden opportunity. Important doors are opening for you right now. Walk through them. If you're getting a strong push, a strong calling, honor that. Go with it. Rene de Bastos, queen of wands. This queen, more than any other, is all about taking the risk, being bold, courageous. Fortune favors the bold. El mundo, the world. Rey de Bastos, king of wands, okay. Siembra and Brazil, seven of pentacles. I see a relationship coming to fruition here. And this person is acting as a catalyst to set you on your soul's journey, to get you on the path to your north node. 
So you and your person of interest probably both have strong fire in your natal charts. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, and Mercury. You could have a Sun, Moon conjunction. One example of many. Uh, your Moon could be at 13 Aries and your person could have his or her Sun at 15 Aries, tight conjunction. Um, but this is really strong, intense energy. It could be you've been waiting for quite some time for this connection to come to fruition. Um, using my own life and my natal chart as an example, as I often do with this channel and with clients. So my catalyst for starting this channel was a connection with a man that I thought might possibly be my divine masculine. I don't think that we are twin flames, but I was going down the twin flame rabbit hole at the time watching all the videos and there was a lot of 5D stuff between us, a lot of synchronicities. Anyway, that connection served its purpose because I have this channel now and I'm very grateful for the success I found with this channel. Um, my south node is cancer. I am most comfortable staying home with my son, telling him stories and baking cookies. Um, I'm not comfortable being on camera. I'm not comfortable um, being on social media, which I'm not. I mean, technically, I guess YouTube is social media, but I can't do Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. It just feels too invasive. It's 2.22 p.m. in San Antonio, Texas, full moon in Aquarius. This is a timeless reading, but... So I've been pushed toward my north node, which is Capricorn, fifth house. I've got Mars, Jupiter, north node, and vertex in Capricorn in the fifth house. And so I'm pushed to share my stories, to share my life, to share my energy, um, share my wisdom to help other people. And it helps me. I've absolutely come into my empowerment by having this channel. And I see something similar here. This connection, this relationship pushing you out of your comfort zone. This new chapter in your life. <clears throat> you could be working on a creative project. You could be writing a book. Um, you could be putting some music together. You could be making music, art. You could be starting a YouTube channel. Um, I see you having crazy inspiration. This person could serve as a muse. Definitely a spiritual connection. Maybe you struggled in your life with codependency and you're coming into your power. The Grand Cross energy is definitely a challenge. I have this. I have a mutable Grand Cross. So Saturn tops my chart. Saturn and Gemini in the 10th. Mercury in the 7th and Pisces. Neptune in the 4th. Sagittarius. Moon in the 1st and Virgo. Um, when you have a grand cross in your natal chart that means you have a lot of squares squares and oppositions and from what I've seen in my own life um, you struggle a lot as a child and into your 20s well in my case 20s 30s 40s I'm just now in my late middle age 47, coming into some semblance of empowerment and independence. I've struggled with codependency all my life. And with my mutable Grand Cross, I've struggled with confidence, uh, with communicating effectively, 
having confidence and communication because I have a tight Mercury Saturn square in my Saturn's in Gemini. Where Saturn shows up in your chart, it restricts. So it could be you struggled with something for years and you're coming to the end of that struggle. You're feeling more comfortable with yourself. Um, maybe you're an extrovert and you don't really enjoy solitude. You don't enjoy being alone. Maybe you like the noise. You like chaos. You like the social media interactions. Um, but I see you being served by solitude, finding your peace, finding your balance, and ushering in this new phase where there's going to be a lot of growth, a lot of prosperity, independence. And I feel like this connection, this relationship has been the catalyst for this change. So that's what I have for pile two. If that resonates, let me know. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Muchas gracias. And if you chose pile three, we have wisdom. Release. Protection, patience, first house, the body, Capricorn, I use, Jupiter, abundance. Jupiter is currently retrograde in Capricorn, but this reading is timeless. Chiron, healing. White Terra, sensitivity. You are becoming increasingly sensitive. Avoid harsh relationships, environments, situations, and chemicals. I'm seeing a strong emphasis here on the sixth house, the house of Virgo. You could be changing your diet and your daily routine. Yoga, drinking hot lemon water when you first wake up, smoothies, um, maybe starting a plant-based diet, meditating on a regular basis. Nematona, sacred space. Create an altar or visit a power place to connect with the divine. Twelfth house, Pisces. Mawu, Mother Earth. You are caught upon to help with environmentalism. Aang, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. Leap of faith. Take a risk and put your heart's true desire into action. I see you being energized. Maybe you've been going through a period of low energy, low vibration, depression. I see your frequency increasing, your vibration raising. You're coming into a high vibration is what I'm getting for pile three. Construcion Obra, Three of Pentacles. As de Bastos, Ace of Wands. Rapid increase in energy. The Rota of Weta, Five of Swords. Visio Elucinacion, Seven of Cups. You're coming out of this. You're coming into clarity. I call Seven of Cups, Neptune Clouds of Confusion. Maybe you've been struggling with some kind of addiction. Food addiction. Noise addiction, which is very common, meaning that you're always on your phone or you're always on um, some device, social media. Um, 
alcohol, drugs. You're getting clean. I see detox. Uh, it could be something so simple as just changing your diet and your lifestyle, your daily routine. Um, I was feeling really good a couple of years ago. I was fasting. I pushed it as far as a 72-hour fast, and it was a dry fast. Dry fast meaning no liquids, no food, nothing for 72 hours. And I felt amazing. I was doing the rebounder. I was hula hooping. I was dancing 30 minutes every day, and I told my son last night, we've got to get back to that because I was feeling so good. And lately, well, the past two years, I've slept a lot. I've had very low energy. <clears throat> so, God, the cards, cards are so loud. Um, having this channel and having clients, it has pushed me, you know, to try to raise my vibration. So lately I've just slept a lot and I've meditated a lot, but I hope to get back into a routine of consistent fasting and exercise. And it could be you're going through something similar. You were in a physical, psychological, psychic slump and you're you're being energized. Um, it could be that you've been struggling with toxic family members. Uh, what I'm getting is you need to protect your sacred space. You need to protect your peace of mind. If you are dealing with any toxic connections or relationships, if you're dealing with energy vampires, if there are people you talk to and every conversation you have is negative, low vibration, it's just gossip or it's bad mouthing someone, uh, I feel like you're being called to walk away from that. Um, That's a constant challenge for me, dealing with family members where every conversation is negative. It's low vibration. It doesn't serve any purpose. Um, a lot of times, especially as women, you know, we feel like we have to stay in these relationships, but we don't. We can certainly limit the interactions that drain us. And that's why I don't do Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. YouTube, that's it. You could be healing from a really intense toxic entanglement. A seven of cups kind of relationship where it was just chaos. No terra firma, no solid ground. It just drains you and you're healing from that. If you're holding on to um, baggage, wounds from a past relationship, it's time to let that shit go. You'll find a lot of peace and power in rituals. Something so simple as just lighting a candle on the full moon, breathing in and breathing out, keeping a manifestation journal, focusing on what you want to call into your life, releasing everything that does not serve you, doing shadow work, purging, Yeah, this to me is the key to all of this. This ties it together. White Terra sensitivity. You are becoming increasingly sensitive. Avoid harsh relationships, environments, 
situations and chemicals. Take care of yourself, protect your sacred space. Be clear with your boundaries. <clears throat> so that's what I have for pile three. If that resonates, let me know in the comments. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications, which is gracias. And if you chose pile four, we have potential. Power, trust, transformation, seventh house, partners, Aquarius, I know. Twelfth house, escape. Scorpio, I transform. Sarah's body, the arts. Express yourself through creative activities. Green Terrace, start delegating. Ask others, including me, to help you instead of trying to do everything by yourself. Lakshmi, or Lakshmi, bright future. Stop worrying. Everything is going to be fine. Mother Mary, expect a miracle. Have faith that your prayers have been heard and are being answered. I'm Ananda Miedo, Nine of Swords. Energia, Asiyan, Eight of Wands. Thrabajo Abisio, Eight of Pentacles. And El Erafonte, the Hierophant. So this is the overachiever pile. You try to do everything yourself. Uh, you micromanage, meaning when you ask someone to do something, you're overseeing them, you're dominating. You don't trust them to get the job done right. Um, my maternal grandmother, she has a lot of that. My mom also has some of that. And I saw that coming out in myself the other day when um, I was supervising my son. He was making an ice cream cake for his dad's birthday. And I found myself micromanaging. And I thought, you know, my son is 12 years old. I should be able to step back and trust him to do this by himself. So, I see a lot of overthinking, overanalyzing, a lot of worry, a lot of anxiety. Um, it could be that you take on a lot, you do a lot because you don't trust other people to do the job. You feel like you have to do it all. Uh, very independent very resourceful, very type A personality, but I see you running on empty. You need to fill your tank. You need to just stop and just breathe in and breathe out. Um, this is a very dry, brittle energy. You could have a lot of fire and earth and air in your chart. You could be lacking water. In my natal chart, it's all earth and air. All I have is Mercury and Pisces. That's it. Cancer South Node, Scorpio I see, but there is a serious lack of water in my natal chart. And you could have something similar. You could have serious Capricorn and Aries. I'm seeing strong cardinal energy. The cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. I'm seeing Capricorn and Aries. Um, I'm thinking of my Capricorn ex. When he washed the dishes by hand, 
he washed the dishes. There were never any specks on the forks. I mean, he was immaculate. He kept his home and his vehicle immaculate. That strong OCD Capricorn energy. I have a lot of Capricorn and Virgo. When I wash dishes by hand, you know, there's not going to be any specks on anything. Um, and I got that from my mom and my maternal grandmother, you know, being very clean and keeping a very um, neat, tidy, organized environment. So... I'm just getting strong workhorse vibes. You do what has to be done, but I don't see you having a lot of fun or a lot of joy. I don't see you focusing on creativity. Um, I don't see you trusting other people. Seventh house is all about partnership. It can be marriage, collaboration. Uh, I see you wanting to do things yourself and being an authority on various things. You've got this very powerful personality. You probably intimidate most people. Um, This is anti-12th house energy. 12th house, which is Pisces, it's just breathing in, breathing out, going with the flow. I don't see you going with the flow. Um, you're going to receive blessings when you let go and let God. What you need to nurture is your intuition and your faith. And I see tremendous reward uh, you could be blessed with this partnership where maybe for the first time in your life you feel like you've met your equal. You've met someone you can respect and trust. Your frequency matches. You're on the same wavelength. Um, this is someone you can trust to be your partner in life, someone you regard as an equal. And this person could push you to relax, to stop working and, and worrying so much. It could be a very um, advantageous, creative partnership. Um, you match, but this person could have a lot more water in his or her chart. They could have the water that you lack. They could have Scorpio and Pisces maybe. So we have two cards of transformation. And with Mother Mary and the Hierophant, um, it could be that you find this transformation and this release and all these blessings through faith doesn't have to be organized religion. It can be spirituality, meditation, Reiki, uh, honoring your intuition, going more into the 12th house, getting out of the 6th house and the 1st house, um, keeping a dream journal, things that may have seemed uh, silly or... Um, mindless to you before, you're starting to see the, the value in spirituality and faith. You're realizing you can't do it all on your own. Uh, this energy is not serving you. Excessive worry and micromanaging. So yeah, that sums it up. Letting go and letting God. And when you let go, the blessings are going to just pour in. And the main blessing that I see could be this really optimal partnership, perhaps for the first time in your life, finding 
joy and release and um, flow in this partnership where you don't have to worry. You can trust this person. You're on the same wavelength and like you, this person has a really strong personality and they're very high functioning, but they're more in tune with with the water, the flow, the, um, the creative feminine energy. So they could have a lot more water in their natal chart. Wow, this reading was challenging for me, all these oracle cards. But if that resonated, let me know. And that concludes this pick a card reading. Thank you all so much for watching liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. Sending you all massive love and light from San Antonio.